that sound. It's just so freaking awesome. <laughs> All right, well, hello everybody. Uh, this is Tynan Sylvester, and uh, we are looking at RimWorld Alpha 3. We got a ton of new stuff here, so let's get to it. What the hell is going on in front of you? Well, that's just a couple of visitors taking care of a psychotic muffalo, which decided to attack them. Uh, I thought that would be a cool intro for the new visitor feature to show that they will take care of crazy animals every now and then. But let's get to a more interesting example here. So, these are uh, some tribal raiders coming after you. And poor Edward, who was just visiting the colony from another faction, is sort of stuck out there in the middle of nowhere. And uh, he is going to get his ass kicked right now by people throwing rocks at his head and shooting arrows at him. I'm trying to direct some of the colonists here to try to take uh, care of the situation. But it uh, looks like Edward is down and we're going to have to try to defend ourselves alone. Now, my guys do have gunpowder fired weapons and they are versus uh, tribal raiders who are using kind of the sticks and stones primitive neolithic style weaponry that you might uh, expect but they're vastly outnumbered and so this is still not going to end very well and as you can see my guys are getting their asses kicked but oh what's this there are some other uh, visitors from another faction just a friendly outlander town that happen to be passing by and uh, maybe they'll help us out let's see if i can run my guys away and uh, get them inside the, uh, the colony wall there for some safety and hope that uh, my buddies here come over and engage the tribals and yes they are. And so uh, I used this video just because I wanted to show you the newest part of RimWorld Alpha 3, the, the new big feature, which is the faction system and how it can actually create new gameplay situations like this where battles aren't always just a push-pull between you and and uh, these generic raider types. There's actually different groups of characters who will send representatives onto the map depending on how they feel about the colony. They might send visitors, they might send help uh, if you're in danger. You can even call them up on the comms console and ask them for help uh, if you're in trouble. So, you know, if you've got good relations with uh, a town or a tribe nearby and some pirates are coming at you and you don't think you can take it, you can uh, just go to the comms console and hope you got a good negotiator or maybe some silver to give away in exchange for uh, some help with uh, the guys who are going to come and kick your ass. So my guys have retreated and uh, I've got the, uh, the allies here taking care of business for me. So they're going to do that for a little bit. And so, all right, they've taken care of the tribals who, because they've taken some losses, are fleeing. And uh, they've been intercepted by an insane muffalo who happened to go insane a couple of minutes ago and just arrived on the scene and is now chasing after this last travel raider who runs away, wounded, clutching his handful of rocks, which he was throwing at people. And uh, my guys are taking pot shots at the poor, poor, insane muffalo, which went psychotic. Uh, you know, who knows why these animals are going psychotic so often? It happens on a pretty regular basis. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be really questioning what's going on there. But, uh, I don't know, that makes the game a little bit more interesting. So here's the um, faction view that shows you the factions. You can see your relations with everybody and their relations with each other uh, and who they are. So we've got tribes, outlander towns, and pirate bands. Uh, you can easily mod in new types of factions. Uh, so here's another kind of situation that you can get. Here's travelers moving through, and uh, I've just accosted them. And here, let's just grab one and try to arrest him, and their faction will become hostile to us. So, whereas before you, you'd get these travels, they were just travelers that would just just walk by, and there'd be no reason not to arrest them and try to recruit them. They were just like this resource you would blindly consume. Now. They come with help. So if you accost people in the area, uh, there's going to be consequences because uh, you know their friends are going to send uh, hit squads after you or refuse to help you. And that can really land you in hot water after a while. So back in Alpha 2, we added modding support. And there's been a huge number of really cool mods that have come out since then. There have been reports of players installing like 15 or 20 mods and running all of them at once together to create this super community version of RimWorld. So let's just take a look at some of what's come out over the past month. The first one is Wood Economy from Itchy Flea. Itchy put in a lot of different subsystems for this. You can chop down the wood, you can saw it up with a bench saw, you can use it to 
build strong walls and pretty walls and chairs and doors and even enhance growing areas with wood mulch. And you can even plant trees and farm your own trees. So that's friggin' awesome. Here is the power switch mod from Haplo, which lets you have a little switch that your colonists can interact with and turn power on and off to an area. Next up, bone mod from Velusia. If you happen to want to use human bones to make rugs and walls. Next up is the Atomic Power Mod by Psychosama. Uh, this one adds a nice, big, dangerous, poorly built nuclear reactor to the game. There's also the same guy, he also created the cremation mod so that if you have too many raider bodies sitting around, as some people do, you can cremate them now. There's the Clutter Mod by Mr. Ofa or Mrofa or something like that. And uh, anyways, this guy just put a ton of furniture and pod beds and holographic plants and stuff in the game. So if you really just want to decorate your colony with a ton of different stuff, you want to pick up this one. And finally, there's Industrial Rim by Kala 13 or Industrial Rim is awesome. Uh, it adds conveyor belts, it adds new power sources, it adds uh, a whole lot of industrial production stuff. You got uh, you got wind farms, you get new kinds of batteries, conveyor belts, a ton of stuff in Industrial Rim. So back to the main game. I put ruins in the game. I really want to expand this system, but uh, when you start out, you're going to find some ancient ruins just left over now, so that makes the environment a bit more interesting. Uh, the bill system has been refined. This is the system that lets you distinguish what's going to be butchered at a butcher table or what's going to be cooked at a cook stove. Uh, and this was a little bit janky in Alpha 2 because it was new. Uh, so we've added some new options for how to control it that make more sense. One of them is you can actually see the ingredient search radius, as you can see here. If you go into add builds, you can configure them to, to run to a different kind of limit. So instead of just doing it like five times or something, you can do it until you have a certain amount in your inventory. And so this creates like a fire and forget kind of system where if you want to say always have 10 simple meals in your inventory uh, you would just set up one bill and it would just run forever and your guys would intelligently maintain that. Another new thing is text translation. Not everything can be translated yet. The system still needs some refinement through Alpha 4 but there is a partial translation into German included in Alpha 3 and uh, I'm hoping this will be a good platform for the people who want to do fan translations of the game. All right, so that's Alpha 3. If you own the game, you'll get an update email. If not, come check it out at roomworldgame.com, link in the description. For updates, you can check ludion.com, and I also tweet at Tynan Sylvester. Thank you very much, and have fun, and I will see you in uh, another month or two. Cheers.